Hello everybody, this is Light Void here and I'm bringing you the third and final episode of my Varian gameplay guide series. And this episode is going to be about Varian's Colossus Smash Heroic, which I believe is probably one of the most fun heroics of Varian to play. Oh, but it is a little dependent on the enemy team composition, but we do see that on the red team, we have myself as Varian, Diablo, Zul'jin, Keltas, and Alex Draza. And on the enemy team, we have Samuro, Anna, Johanna, Phoenix, and Tyrael. So, the basics behind Colossus Smash is a Varian acting as a burst assassin, which he is able to burst down squishies very easily. But unfortunately with the recent Varian rework, his survivability has taken quite a dramatic hit due to the shield wall nerfs, but that should be alright if you land your Q properly, that is. Diablo gets a uh, stun onto the Samira clone, not sure what is happening there, but usually as Colossal Smash Varian, you probably never want to go into the full man in the early game. You simply want to wait out for level 4 and then you can probably stop applying a little bit more pressure. But usually the only reason you pick Colossus Smash is for lots of burst damage which your team can follow up on. And when your team doesn't need the additional lockdown from Torn Varian. So I'm just solo laning against Terio. I probably pushed the wave a little bit too far out. In fact for most of Varian, Varian builds whether you're going Taunt, Twin Blades or Colossus Smash, if you are in the solo lane, you'd optimally not want to push out this far, but since I see that all my opponents on the mini-map are not rotating towards top, and plus we have the Watchtower here, it's fine to apply a little bit of pressure to the enemy laner, just show, so you can show them who's boss. And with a very good team composition such as Diablo and Kelpass, Colossal Smash just simply reduces the armor of the opponent that you choose to smash and this makes following up kills much easier. Tyrael is going to shield the minions but Varian doesn't have the best wave clear but he has pretty good single target damage so optimally you want to be playing Varian as a solo nader but not like Sonya or Malfiel where, where you have to constantly attack minions to gain sustain. Instead you should try to probably just let the opponent push the wave and then let the wave freeze somewhere close to your tower so when the enemy tries to attack you you can simply retaliate with a quick heroic strike and lion small combo and then retreat back to your towers. Indeed it's quite important to not let the minions actually hit your towers or then you'll be losing out. You can simply activate the parry to gain a little bit of damage reduction from the minions. And indeed, I do hit level 4, so I can indeed now access Colossus Smash. And I'm looking to apply a little bit of pressure to Tyrael. I'm definitely not going to kill him for sure. But at this point, I'm just trying to farm up my High King's Quest, which was the level 1 talent that I did take. In fact, Colossus Smash is best paired with High King's Quest simply due to the fact that all the attack damage that you gain from High King's Quest is actually doubled due to Colossus Smash passive effect. And with this in mind, we can see that I'm just trying to play a little safe. Note that Tyrael actually doesn't have any self-sustain, so with a well-placed Lion's Fang, I can actually heal up for quite a lot. So it looks like Tyrael is actually quite scared of me at this point. This is usually what you want once you hit level 4 as Varian in solo lane. You don't really want to push the wave out that far, but I do here anyways to make sure that Tyrael knows who's the real king and our minions are going to start pushing. Colossus Mash also makes Varian better at wave clear due to the fact that his space attack damage is uh, increased by 100% so it's doubled. My team is going to start taking the Sky Temple and indeed I leap in trying to, trying to eliminate Johanna but unfortunately she is a little bit too tanky and she manages to get out quite nicely. 
Johanna here was actually quite a good pick against the Zoljin and myself, but I went for Hiking's Quest anyway because Johanna's blind doesn't really last for that long. And once Johanna uses her blind, she can't use it for another 8 or 9 seconds, so within that short period of time, you can definitely get some things done. I tried to eliminate Tyrio, and Diablo charges for Phoenix, which was probably a not the correct choice. We should have focused on Tyrio or Phoenix, not both of them simultaneously. Johanna marches in trying to delay us taking the temple, but I get blinded a little bit, so I stay in the back until the blind wears off. And due to the fact that they are outnum we're outnumbered, we retreat and we wait for Alex Strauss to come. And it looks like Kaelfass is going to be split pushing again. Well, thank god Kaelfass didn't go for convection, he actually went for Mana Addict. But anyway, I'm going to get a little bit low on health and Alex Strauss is going to heal, heal us up. No blood ammo. And Johanna is going to start retreating. But the temple has been taken, so there's no point in fighting over the, the non-existent objective. I do get sleep dots by Anna. At this point, I'm just trying to auto-attack enemies as much as possible so that I can finish the first portion of my hiding quest, which is to attack heroes 50 times in order to gain 10 attack damage, which is then doubled to become 20 if you have Colossus Smash. Here, nothing, co uh, nothing com too committed, I'm just landing auto attacks here and there to farm up my quest. I know that I probably will survive or not if Phoenix manages to get me. It looks like I'm going to get pulled by Johanna's Condemn and I'm not going to be walking out alive. Indeed, I do go down, unfortunately. I'm not sure why Alex Strasser was in the middle lane farming. She probably was thinking to soak 10, but we certainly had an advantage there if we had Alex Strasser with us. Nevertheless, Samuro is going to sort of split push or not. Kael'thas is actually going to dominate the lane instead. I suppose with Kael'thas's a huge area of attack damage, that does make Samuro a little bit vulnerable to that. But it looks like this Samuro player actually left the game, so it is a it is a bot Samuro, but bot Samuros are actually quite good at controlling mirror images. But nevertheless. There are three portions to Varian's Hiking's quest. So there's the hero's attack, the number of takedowns, and the glo regeneration globe scattered. So I'm usually seeking to get those regeneration globes as much as possible from minion waves. It looks like Samir was going to try and take him over the temple by himself, but I'm rotating downwards. So the whole team is rotating downwards. We do indeed, both of the teams actually have heroics, so this would just be a normal 5v5 team fight. and I'm trying to pick out targets, indeed I charge straight for Phoenix, applying a little bit of pressure on him. I'm zoning the entire enemy team out, and looks like Johanna might just get killed by us. If, but Tyrio man manages to land a beautiful sanctification there, shielding all his and. All his team members beautifully. Johanna is getting quite low but I think that her shield is off cooldown. Indeed she activates her iron skin just before she dies so that she won't get crowd controlled by Diablo but at this point I think we've basically won the objective so I'm not sure why Tyrael is still standing around here. I just charge in for a little bit of extra nuisance and I did pick Warbringer in this particular match as the enemy team doesn't really have a lot of burst and Samuro and Phoenix are basically uh, very powerful auto attackers so shield wall is not necessary in this case. Diablo is going to start farming the middle lane. He actually does already have a hundred souls so he's just farming the minion wave just for fun. Note that if you are watching this guide before the Diablo rework this is the old Diablo. But I doubt that really makes a difference in terms of how Varian Colossus Smash should be approached. Basically, you just want to keep farming until you've gotten all portions of the Hiking Quest, at which point you'll gain a massive boost in attack damage, which is very substantial. In fact, most of the time, I go for Hiking's Quest instead of the 
Lion's Maw quest, the Q quest, because of the fact that buffing the auto attacks is so significant, and the extra damage and slow from the Q quest is really not substantial enough for me to take that over High King's quest. So Miro is going to play around with his mirror images, and they're actually going to steal our siege camp. But as you can see, I'm just playing very cautiously with Varian. You can play in frontline, especially if the enemy doesn't have a lot of threat potential with Phoenix and Samuro not really being that threatening. But I do get eliminated nearly instantly. That was actually quite a bad place for us to fight. Even though it's advantageous for Diablo to fight in these small choke points, I probably engaged a little bit too hard there. So if I had gotten shield wall there, I might have survived. But as Colossus Smash Varian, he really doesn't have a lot in terms of survivability compared to pre-rework variant. So you have to play a little bit more cautiously and usually charge into battle only when you know your Q is up and your parries are up. By taking Warbringer, I do still have two charges of parry, which can negate auto attack damage. Specifically for this game, I chose Shattering Pro simply because they had a lot of shields. And it will completely decimate Phoenix or Johanna when I get the chance to jump on top of them. The enemy team is looking to take over this temple, but I am indeed taking this temple by myself. And the Ruza camp up top is going to take the tower. And with the level 7 talent of Second Wind, I don't really need any healer to come with me since I already have enough self-sustain. And I just finished Hiking's Quest. So optimally you want to finish Hiking's Quest about, you know, 10 to 12 minutes into the game. If you're doing, you know, moderately well. If you're not doing well, then it's going to be quite hard. Due to the fact that you have to participate in 5 hero takedowns for a p one portion of the quest. So if your team is not looking good, then you'll obviously fall behind in your Hiking's Quest progress. But it looks like my team are actually doing quite well without me. Even though I would not recommend my team to engage now. Kael'thas is in a bit of a pickle. And Samuro is going to start chasing them. But I'm rotating downwards. I'm looking for low health enemies. I managed to eliminate Tyrael. And because of my high threat potential. Especially with Shattering Throw. I can probably pick off one of them due to my extremely high auto attack damage. The minions do manage to wake me up from sleep and my charge is nearly off cooldown. And if I manage to land a Lion's Maw and I charge, then she's probably dead. As you can see, the attack damage is very substantial at this point in the game. I do have, as you can see in the top left corner, I do have 40, 427 attack damage, which is enough to one shot people given the 3 second armor debuff by Colossus Smash. Note that Colossus Smash reduces the enemy's armor by 20 for 3 seconds. So during that short period of 3 seconds, if you manage to weave in a couple of auto attacks, then all of those auto attacks will have 20% increased damage as well, so don't forget that. As well as, of course, your, your team members are going to also deal an extra 20% damage to that marked target and a bruiser camp is pushing up top and colossus smash variant does have fairly decent wave clear but obviously he's not as good as gray main or he's not as good as gray main or other solo lane heroes or assassins like hanzo or you know blaze or that sort of hero but Plus Smash variant with Hiking's Quest deals significant amount of auto attack damage and you just auto attack the minions to death basically. Diablo is posing to engage since we do have level 16 and Samuro is just going to keep confusing us but nevertheless with Colossus Smash I just sort of hover around in the back line and Johannes Blind does land and uh, Wonderful sanctification actually prevents Diablo's Apocalypse from landing onto the blue team members, but Diablo is a little bit too deep into the enemy team, but 
I managed to pick off a couple of the enemy team members and surprisingly Sol Jin survives with just a slither of health. At level 16 I do go for Banner of Ironforge since that's extremely beneficial for Alexstrasza and Diablo. With the Banner of Ironforge we basically gain 20%, 20 armor for my entire team and with Alexstrasza going for the W build it is quite substantial especially with Diablo having such a high amount of health at 100 souls so Banner of Ironforge is usually the banner of choice at level 16. I could have chosen banner of Dalaran which is the banner that gives me 20% spell power. That would have been pretty useful as well but as you know my shattering throw just nearly one shots Phoenix so basically the moral here is try not to take Phoenix into a variant but then again Phoenix can deal a massive amount of sustained damage so Varian sometimes might not be able to counter Phoenix but nevertheless we're going to start moving in into the enemy's keep and the boss is going to take the rest of the game for us I believe that we do take the game here but let's just pause here for a moment and have a look at the enemy team as well as my talents so for my build I went Hiking's Quest, Colossus Smash, Second Wind, Warbringer, Shattering Throat Although you can take Mortal Strike or Juggernaut if you're up against that sort of team. Banner of Iron Forge and usually at level 20 I would take Glory to the Alliance or the Master at Arms. So the Master at Arms basically makes Varian's Colossus Smash an AoE ability and it reduces the cooldown by 10 seconds. So that is one of the best talents in the entire game simply due to the fact that if the enemy is grouped up you can actually just Colossus smash them and reduce all of their armor by 20. But as you can see Diablo is sort of coming back. I think he just lost all of his soul so he's, that's why he's coming back. But nevertheless Varian with his Colossus smash build is very effective against low health squishies and tanks that don't have a lot of dive, you know, peel for dive. So against Diablo and Kael'thas Colossal Smash Varian does deal a lot of damage to a lockdown enemy. In fact, the only difference between Colossal Smash and Twin Blades is that Twin Blades is much better for sustained fights and drawing out the fights as long as possible so that you can gain an advantage due to your fact that Twin Blades doesn't rely on ability power or or your shield wall that much but for Colossus Smash if you are up against a team that is very good at lockdown so unlike the blue team here if you are up against that you can still take Colossus Smash just make sure that you take shield wall and that you engage very cautiously maybe not as boldly as I have engaged in this game but we do manage to take the game here and actually you can see that Phoenix is going to get one shotted by my shattering throw combo so keep in mind that when you're playing Colossus Smash variant against a shield heavy hero like Phoenix. But we do manage to take the game here and basically the main point of this guide is to show how Colossus Smash variant can and should be fitted in to a team composition such as Diablo and Kael'thas. But all in all from these three episodes of the Varian Guides, if you haven't already checked out my Taunt and Twin Blades guide, you can check them out on my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe as well, as I'll be making more gameplay casts and analysis in the future. So if you want to see that sort of thing, please let me know in the comments below and suggest heroes for me to make a guide on. But as I was saying, Varian is very dependent on his team and usually in Hero League or ranked matches you would like to go taunt as much as possible simply due to the fact that taunt doesn't really rely on your team setting up the kills because as taunt you're the one setting up the kills but for twin blaze and colossus smash you have to wait for your tank to engage appropriately before you charge into battle so that's basically the difference between the free heroics 
But nevertheless, I find Varian very fun to play, and he has a lot of gameplay potential, which can be explored infinitely due to the fact that he has three completely different gameplay styles, and it will take a lot of time for you to practice and master all of these gameplay styles. However, this will be the end of my Varian gameplay guide series. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed it, and I certainly hoped I certainly enjoyed recording them, but for now, if you like this video, give it a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more content like this in the future. And for now, I'd like to wish everyone who watches my videos a wonderful day or a wonderful evening, wherever you are, and I hope that you'll drop by my channel more often, and for now, I'll sign off and this was light of void speaking and it was a blast making these varying guides goodbye